Alright, but I take a look at the do now and the aim. And I'd like you to copy this down and try to answer these two questions. Let's get a volunteer for uh, first one, equation of the circle, Ida? That's correct. Now this second question is an unusual question, and it's going to be important because the aim today is what's the locus definition of a parabola. So what do we even mean? Without, not the answer to this question, what does that even mean? What is a locus? What is a locus? Definition, do you mean? You might know the answer to this question, but it's, it, even without being able to explain what the locus question means. Does anyone know locus definition? Yeah, Rob? It's like the set of points that follow a certain set of criteria. Good, excellent way to say that. And Riyaz, do you have an answer for this? Say something similar. Okay. An answer for locus definition of a circle, Bethany? Um, a circle is the locus of all points equidistant from a fixed point. Good. Write that down. Say it again. Um, a circle is the locus of all points equidistant from a fixed point. Yeah, so we're going to see, and you're going to basically create how to come up with the locus definition of a parabola. And we're going to do this with an activity. And for this, I'm going to give everyone two sheets of paper. The first one is the activity sheet. You can take one and pass the rest back. And the second one is a blank piece of paper. And you can write your name on both of these, because at the end of the class, I'm taking in both. Yeah. Oh, you have an extra? Mm -hmm. Okay. Get that to the second. Okay, you need one? Oh, you have it? Now I'm going to show you how you can fold up your paper in such a way that it becomes a parabola. And the way this is going to start is I want you, everyone to take their paper and hold it horizontally.
Now, a circle is based on a single point and a radius. A parabola is based on a line and a dot or a point. And the line for us is going to be at the bottom, the bottom edge of the, of the paper. The focus, which is the, which is the point that the parabola is based on, I want you to make a dot about an inch off of the center of the paper, right? An inch from the bottom center. So for instance, you make a dot on the bottom of your paper like this. Now what I want everyone to do is somewhere on the bottom of this edge, somewhere here on the left-hand side on the bottom, you can make a dot right on the edge and label it R1. Like that. Yes, yeah, so, so it doesn't have to be directly beneath the point? It doesn't have to. In fact, it's probably better if it's not directly beneath. I put mine on the, on the left-hand <coughs> side of the dot. And here's the most important part. I'm going to ask you to fold your paper sort of inward. You're going to fold this so that the R1 ends up right on top of that dot over here. So you fold it in such a way, fold it upward so that the R1 ends up right on top of this dot. And then what I want you to do is, on that crease, my dotted line here represents the crease. Oh, and Jennifer, let me just have you turn off the lights for a second so you can pick it up on the camera. Right? On the crease, directly above R1, I want you to put a dot there on the crease and label that point S1. So that you can, now, if your point is, is too far away and the S1 would go off the paper, that's okay. You can leave that off for now. Now, what you're going to do is do this one more time, but this time with R2, which is somewhere else on the line. Let's make it on the right hand side. Things so far, all you have is two dots, something like this. But when you keep doing this over and over, it's going to become a par parabola. And the thing that you're going to figure out with your group is why, and what does that say about what a parabola is. This is going to become a parabola once you make all your points, but the tricky part is figuring out why that has to be. But what I have here to help you is a sheet with uh, ten questions on it. And what I want you to do, um, in a minute we're going we're to get into the groups of four that we've been in before and answer these questions. Everyone's going to hand in at the end of the write-up with a, a sentence or two about each question. And hopefully when it's all done, you guys will have figured out what makes a parabola a parabola. So I'm going to give you about uh, 12 minutes to work on this activity. You can go ahead and get into the groups of four.
Chicago, but it's directly in Bucks. Is that a cost of number one? I get that. Like this. Fishing one.
Be sure to get a few more points on your parabola. Okay, everyone, let's stop for a minute and let me direct your attention to the front. First off, this, this one was a good one. Here's Ida's. She's got 10 points. And hopefully yours, you can verify that yours is looking uh, very much like a, like a parabola. But making the parabola is okay, but understanding why that is a parabola, that's the hard part. So let's go through uh, some of the answers to these questions. And if you take a look up at the screen, and let's have everyone stop for a minute, and Jennifer and Leanne, you hit the lights. Up on the screen, I have this program, which you actually have built into your, to your calculator. And this is, this is the situation that, that you've had. This here is, uh, is F. This is R1. This is the point. Uh, this, this line here is the crease. Now, what is that crease? Let's go for a volunteer first. What is that? Yes, yeah, say it up. That's, that's exactly right. Now, if someone had asked, you know, how do we know that for sure? And that's something we're just going to kind of uh, assume because to do a formal proof is, it would, would be uh, tricky. But for now, it seems like it, it is the perpendicular bisector. And, and it is. It definitely is the midpoint. Now, what is it about this triangle? And, by making this on this program, take a look at what I'm able to do. I can actually move to this point and I can move it around and see what, what happens. So basically, by moving this point around, the crease, you can see the crease changing, and you can see the intersection point. Uh, meaning also, what's so special about the triangle? Volunteers for that? Special about the triangles? Okay, go, Daniel. How can, yeah, now, this is a big part of the proof. How do you know it's isosceles? I'll give someone else a chance to, to, to justify that. Robin? All the points on the perpendicular bisector are equidistant from the two points on the base, and so the sides have to be isosceles. Because you have, you have congruent right triangles, mm -hmm. and, and since they're congruent right triangles, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, so you know those two, the two um, legs of the triangles. Oh, the great isosceles. point. You actually explained it both ways. Some, some people did an actual proof of the uh, isosceles triangle, proof that, that, that they are congruent triangles. But you mentioned at the end, and say John will mention in her group, that you don't even need to prove the triangle is congruent. The sector right there says if all points on the perpendicular bisector are equidistant. So both either of those are okay. So take a look at this. As we move it around, you can see this point over here, this intersection point, which is what you've been calling S1, S2, S3, and all that. I also have here listed the actual measurement of those lengths. And you can see that there, I don't know what happened there, 3.0, 3.1, that's a little glitch, I guess. Anyway, you can see that point moving around and making the, uh, the parabola. So what is the locus definition then? I want to have a nice official locus definition for this. And Jennifer, we'll have the lights for a second again. And let's get this one down onto the paper. An official locus definition, this is the, this is, uh, so sort of the final step of this. Okay, let me go with uh, David. Never let's write this down. A parabola is the locus of all points that are equidistant from a point in the line.
unlike a circle, we don't have to be given a, a specific distance. It's just all the points that are equally distant from a point and a line. And that's why this thing makes the parabola. And uh, Jennifer, if you hit the lights one last time, I'll show you something pretty neat on this. This uh, Capri Junior program, which you have, some people were issued it as a geometry sketchpad program. One thing you can do with this is you can, you can hide some of the lines. I just want to show you what that looks like when I hide a few of these lines. I hide this guy. I'll hide this. Hide this. I'm just going to hide the crease. Hide that. And finally, I'll hide this perpendicular uh, line. And this line segment. There. We go. So now that everything's all hidden, now I can pick up this point here and just move it around. We can just watch that. That intersection point is still there. So even though those, even though all those lines are gone, the intersection point is still there. So I can kind of move it around. You can see this thing moving around the uh, moving around the parabola. And another thing I could do that's kind of neat is I could actually move the focus point. And watch how that affects. If I move it, let's say I move it up. So now I'm able to conduct this experiment again with the focus a little further from the line. Take a look at what happens now. I end up with a more sort of flattened out parabola. So are there any questions about locus definition of a parabola? Let's uh, do two things. We're, we're going to turn in the work that you did today. But first, move your desk back, then organize your papers. Thank <laughs> you.